He's been coaching in the NFL since 2001. That's 22 years you used to do some quick math. Damn. Not only is he a big-ass brain whenever it comes to football, but he's currently in charge of a team that is in the hunt every single year because they were patient, built it the right way, and got Josh Allen as their motherfucking quarterback. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, defensive coordinator and head coach for the Buffalo Beals, Coach McDermott. Yeah. Yeah. Coach, Coach! Coach, what up, man? What's up? How we doing? You look so cool right now. I don't know if you can <laughs> see how cool you look in the shot. You look so cool right now. I think I look even cooler. Maybe I should take this sweatshirt off. I got a, I got a shirt on like you right underneath this. Should I take it off? I mean, don't talk about a ball coach. What, what type of team are you? Like, like to the, uh, you know, got that type of T-shirt. What do you call that? Uh, tank top, coach. Tank, tank, tank top. top. Yeah. Coach, are you jocked right now? Are you properly jocked right now? Are you able to work out with how much? Uh, <laughs> are you are you jocked up right now? <laughs> you do I do it? First ever, first ever guest. Let's yep. see it. No, uh, Al Mike was there. He, he looked, he looked jocked. <laughs> yeah, he was. Are you jocked right now or not, Coach? Are you jocked up? Or you... No, 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 no. Definitely. I'm at my desk working. Yes, I'm at my desk working, trying to figure out a, a way to get us through OTA number three tomorrow. <laughs> What is OTAs for your team, especially, obviously, a very veteran-led team? You guys have been around each other for a long time, seemingly have the culture built that you would want to be, you know, kind of in a winning organization. What are OTAs right now? Just kind of getting everybody back in the building? Are you changing things now that you're calling the plays on defense? What is it like this year as opposed to maybe years past? Yeah, I mean, you know, as, as much as it stays the same, it changes, right? So we start trying to start from, from step one again every year and, and rebuild this thing. It's a new team every season, and – um, there'll be new challenges this year, you know, different than there was last year. Some will be the same. Um, but, no, Josh has done a great job. He's been here the whole spring, and uh, his leadership's huge for us, as, as you mentioned earlier, and um, I think we're off to a good start here. Hell yeah, Coach. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, the, uh, the NFL had their schedule release, I don't know, a week or two back, and they, they make a big deal about it, and we sit here and we talk about matchups. Do you guys as coaches in the front office, like, do you go through your schedule and devise a plan once that comes out, or do you guys care? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, we'll, we'll kind of take a look at, um, you know, maybe our first couple of opponents, um, maybe a short week opponent here or there that we may face coming back off of a road trip, uh, per se, and just try and get ahead a little bit. But I've also been around it where you kind of work too too much in the off season and you don't focus on on your own team. And then and you kind of you know overlook some things that are going on internally with your own team. So we try and find that sweet spot. Yeah, the schedule release has been made a big deal by everybody that isn't actually playing in the games. Oh, yeah. That's what we just heard from your answer. I mean, we're not going to – right? I mean, AJ, I don't, I don't want to – you know, yep. that's what I heard. But we make a massive deal out of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, the prime time this. Oh, this oh, matchup's going to be this. Hell yeah. You guys, though, are the matchup of a weekend because of what you've been able to build your team to at this point. Now, I understand that everybody over there, because we have Vaughn on, and we've been lucky enough to chat with Josh, and also Jordan Poyer, who's back. Congrats. Be you know, that's, that's huge news. But every time, it's like we haven't – accomplished our goals yet so like outside noise is very loud about you guys and it has been and it will be forever and you talked about you know every season has different challenges and everything like that last year it seems like you guys had a litany of adversity that I understand it's very hard to win a game to begin with but whenever you talk about what happened before the season even started then during the season one of your players dies on a football field on primetime television in front of everything and then everything else that also took place around your team it's like you're not allowed to make excuses because you're a football coach but obviously you're thinking to yourself that maybe next year we won't have as much to deal with and how heavy the year was or is that just you have to take it day by day? Do you think about that at all? Like everything that could potentially be an interference in winning off the field happened to you guys last year. And it's like you can't acknowledge that, but you kind of have to, don't you, Coach? Yeah, I think, you know, you want to keep big picture perspective on things. And, you know, to say we haven't been successful here, I don't think it's accurate, right? It's just we haven't, we haven't reached the, the top of the mountain yet. But when we got here, to your point on the, on the amount of primetime games we have this season in particular, but also the last couple of years, we had a ton of 1 o'clock games on Sundays here when we first got here. And, and now we've moved the needle enough to you know, have enough success, if you will, that we're playing a, a ton of primetime games and, and we're going over for an international game this year to yeah. London. And that'll be an experience for us. And um, so, but, you know, we're, we're – We've got to start over, as I said. We're working towards trying to get back to where we were and then and then capitalize on it, um, which every team is this time of year. Coach, 
just I know that you have to be the motivator and have to do that whole thing. We all have become Bills fans because the way your team plays and the personality of your team and the way the offense and the defense fly, I mean, everything about it. But last year, I feel like we grew, we grew very close to your team because yeah. how you guys handled every situation. You should be very proud of what you did. Speaking of, Ty has a question for you, Coach. Yeah, Coach, obviously to be a successful head coach, uh, not even necessarily head coach, just a coach in the NFL, you need to be able to be a leader of men. When you look back to the DeMar Hamlin situation, was there anything – in your you know coaching career that kind of prepared you for a situation like that I don't know how it could and and obviously you know the your support staff and the uh, athletic trainers like they were heaped with a bunch of praise and rightfully so but I think a lot of people you know were talking about like how eloquently and how great you handled that situation was there anything that could have prepared you for that or, or not really yeah I mean there's a lot of things in this job as a head coach that you try and prepare for but there's also no substitute for experience and in that case there was nothing even close to the situation that we that we went through as a team. And I thought, to your point, our staff handled it extremely well. Uh, we're thankful DeMar is in, in a good spot right now. And, and, and ironically enough, uh, before we came up to do this interview, um, you know, we all or most of the most of the players and, and all of the staff went through a CPR training, uh, formal CPR training this offseason, which you learn a lot right through that experience and how we can better prepare ourselves to care for our players, care for our staff. And um, so it's just great to see the turnout that we had uh, just a few minutes ago for that. Is that league wide or is that you guys in your building? No, that was, that was just us in our building, but we're hoping, um, I think we've got some good footage of it. Uh, our, uh, our content people got some good footage of it. And I think it'll get out there soon enough. And, and maybe that again, motivates others to do the same. The way your entire building operated during that entire thing was incredibly classy. I think there was no leaks of anything either. No. Like that was normally in the world that we're in, especially when it's the number one story in everything, not just sports, but political conversations were happening, news, entertainment, everything. It was the number one story, and you had to keep everything in there while also dealing with a lot of like grief, like a grief. Like that's a tough thing that in the face of adversity, you showed up. You should be incredibly proud of yourself, Coach, and obviously your building. Pac-Man has a question for you, Coach. And I will say this. I respect more that you, you stood for the players, too, in, in saying, like, look, we're not going back out there. That's first and foremost. But I wanted to ask you about the big tight end, um, Dalton. How, how excited for you? I mean, how excited are you for him to fit in the offense? And how is he looking through OTAs? Yeah, he's done a real nice job, Pac-Man. We're, we're extremely excited to have Dalton here. He's done a good job. He's off to a very good start. Um, you know, he's just the tight ends and the quarterbacks I've been around through my time in Philadelphia under Andy and then Carolina. You know, it's it sometimes can become a quarterback's best friend, yeah. whether it's throwing a hot uh, read out out on a, on a site to a, to a tight end on a blitz or just getting that critical first down or red zone play. Uh, in production, I think it's critical. And Dawson Knox has done a nice job for us. And now to add Dalton to the mix, I really think they're going to be a pretty good tandem here for us. I've said it a couple of times, and you haven't combated it, so I assume it's the truth. You're DC again, yeah? I am. Yeah, I How's am. How's it going? How's it going? Back in the weeds, huh? We're we're doing it. How is how is the whole thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I I love it. Honestly, I'm, I'm having a ton of fun with it. It feels good to be back with the guys. As a head coach, you know, we we coach, but we don't coach. A lot of the time is spent. Uh, on things outside of coaching, and <clears throat> and uh, it feels really good to, to be able to be back in the weeds with the defense, with the guys, with the staff, solving problems. Uh, you know, when we get out there on the field in the first OTAs and competing a little bit uh, with our offense, and, and uh, you know, I stopped by on my way to the defensive team meeting the other morning, and I made sure the offensive uh, guys, you know, kind of poked them a little bit and said, hey, it was after day one, it was one defense zero for the offense so mm. that got him that got him going a little bit and a little friendly talk doesn't doesn't hurt hey what do you want me to say boys i know i'm the head coach but also <laughs> true one zip here bruce arians after the first uh uh otas offense versus defense whenever he first came back to the indianapolis colts he was offense coordinator literally after the first day on the field he walked into the team meeting he had a black kangol on he had a black polo on black shorts on black stockings all the way up to here you know the compression things and black shoes on and he sits down and i'm like uh 
man, I love the Johnny. Like, I like that. I wear all black as well. He goes, this is a motherfucking funeral for that defense. We just beat the shit out of him. <laughs> he, he, he literally had a chance to talk. So then it was like, all right, uh, offense quarter, defense quarter, special teams quarter, everybody's going to speak, you know, after day one kind of to the entire team. And he gets up there and he goes, y'all motherfuckers see what I'm wearing? <laughs> that, was literally, that was literally what he did. And then he said, we're going to do it again today. And then he just sat back down. They hear the defense go, boo, you know, that whole yeah. thing. Are you a... Uh, it, I, I found that to make practices much better. Yeah. Like when the offensive yeah. coordinator seemingly is like calling, like Antoine Bethea, he's like, hey, B, we, like he was actually calling people out. Are you like that? Are you a natural? I love it. Okay, yeah. good. I love it. I love it. I love when guys talk trash. Um, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's May, right? So we're thankful to have the players here to begin with, but we got to keep it, we got to keep it juice flowing because if not, yeah. It's just not how I do things, how we do things. A, but B, it's you know it gets boring after a while. So you got to just keep it flowing. Let guys, you know, talk some trash out there and get a, get some friendly competition going. And you know maybe I'll steal that idea from Coach there and show up tomorrow at OTA number three in all black. How about that? <laughs> all right, call your shot. I love it. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, yeah, you're definitely not going to be bored on game days. Have you thought about that? How you manage your time? Obviously, calling the defense again and being so involved, and also. Obviously, all the responsibilities that come with a head coach, do you have to delegate certain things? Yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be new for me, AJ. And as, as already practice has been new in, in some regards and, and where I spend my time and uh, who runs the practice in different, on different periods. So, so that's also going to be new for me. And so, I'm, you know, we've spent some time thinking about that. There's going to be some differences that people will see on the sideline from uh, last season and, and the seasons prior. So it'll be different for me. And, um, you know, I think it's going to be it's going to be a challenge. There's no doubt about it. When you're, especially when you're on defense, when a lot of the situations as a head coach that you have to manage are when you're on offense and you need to be up on the sideline, but your defense is, you know, waiting for some adjustments behind you. So I think that piece will be a work in progress as we move forward here. Are you gonna be able to keep Ken Dorsey in check? That guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Got anger. Just so yeah. angry. That guy's yeah. so angry all the time. Just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, disgusting. Yeah, he's, he's a heck of a competitor, man. You know, you don't finish as a Heisman finalist without being a competitor, a competitive person. So I love the fire. You know, I love the fire, I, especially from an offensive guy. Those guys are usually um, pretty laid back and, you know, feet up. I go into offensive meetings and it's like, um, you know, it's kind of like a funeral a little bit. Just people, you know, just like their defense. You know, these guys are up on the edge of their seat. Uh, it's different, you know. So I've had to adjust a little bit. Uh, but no, Ken's Ken's done a nice job. Love the fire. Love the uh, competitive nature. And he'll yell at me sometimes underneath his breath. He doesn't think I see it, but I see it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sounds like the culture up there is a beautiful one. We uh, we had to cover obviously the moment in which he showed emotion and genuine passion. Mm -hmm. Seemed oh, like yeah. and play. Awesome. Yeah, AJ and I literally. We lead the show, we're like, that is the greatest thing we've seen a coach do in a long time. Mm -hmm. And there was other places that were like, what a stain on this man's reputation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's going to have to get, there was people saying that, like that had microphones in front of him. And we felt like obligated to let everybody know, like, hey, everybody in that locker room that saw that is like, hell yeah, dude. We need this. Like this guy, this guy wants it just as bad as us. You know, it feels like that. Yeah. How do you find those guys? Because obviously once you lose day ball, <laughs> it's like, how are you going to be able to maintain it? It's like, how have you been able to fill so many spots so well, seemingly, over this entire period of the Buffalo Beals being a primetime team? No, like I learned years ago, um, to your point, you know, I think I was playing youth baseball and I just loved to compete when I was young and had a, had a baseball coach who, you know, went through the deal of, hey, everyone, everyone plays and the end of the game doesn't really you, – you don't know if you won or lost. And I remember, man, I was miserable. I was like seven, eight years old. I was miserable. Because that, that to me is not competing, and like that made it that made a mark on my on, on me as a person. And I'm like, hey, we're gonna you know we're gonna have competitive people here, right? That's what we're that's that's the business we're in, results driven business. People that care, they're passionate about it. Um, so I'm, you know, look, you put you you know all the while you got to be able to you know keep your composure and poise in the moments to call the right plays and execute the way we need to execute. But all that being said, I, I like the competitive nature. And we've got more people like that here. Um, and it's just when you have the right people, the right people recommend the right people, right? And so it just leads to when you've got good people of high character and that have uh, 
passion and share a common goal and a purpose, they know what you're looking for. And so if I say, hey, who's out there um, that we can bring in? Who are the young coaches out there, maybe at the college level, maybe in the NFL, that I don't know about? Um, you know, it's just a they know what, what I expect. They know what we expect in terms of uh, our culture and, and adding to our culture the right way. Yeah, if he wouldn't have done that, I think you'd potentially fire him the next day from what it sounds like, yep. <laughs> which I absolutely love. Uh, you've done it the right way. You should be pumped about it, as are the Bills fans. Uh -huh. Hey, oh, yeah. Bills Mafia is so – I'm going to ask you at the end about it. What a fan base to be a coach for, especially the style of coach that you are. It feels like a perfect kind of match. Tone has a question for you, Coach. Coach, uh, we didn't get to see it last year because of injuries, but now that you are the D.C., how excited are you that, that Trey White and Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer and Vaughn Miller, those – you're going to get a chance to see all those guys on the field at the, at the same time. Are you excited for that? For the entire year because there's going to yes. be real grass, too. Real grass, yeah. super grass. It's going to be super grass on the field, everyone. <laughs> yeah, no, I am. I'm excited to have those guys back. Um, they've all worked extremely hard. We, you know, we missed them last season. And at different points, you know, they were some out there, some not. And then at times all of them are just out. And so, you know, it's uh, that was tough. But we learned a lot about ourselves and – as we talked earlier, there's always challenges through the course of a season. There'll be different ones this year. and uh, But it certainly helps uh, when you've got good players and, and they're out there on the field and available. And uh, I don't care what who the coach is. That, you know, good players make good coaches, right? So at the end of the day, um, it's awfully nice when you have good players out there playing for you. Hey, we're going to be super aggressive out there? Aren't we setting the tone yeah. on the defensive side, you know? Mm -hmm. A lot of people saying you haven't called plays in a long time. You might have lost your fastball. Yeah, you, <laughs> you hearing that? You, you understand that as well or what? Mm -hmm. You understand that? Well, we'll see. They may be right. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. That th From the offensive side, like so much firepower. Right, and yeah. allegedly potentially more? Yeah. Huh? Ooh, ah, the really desert, huh? Out. Ah? You guys make any moves on the offense? You don't know, right? We'd like to come be back on the show, too. Let's not put you in a spot, you know. True. <laughs> and I'll be able to come back. We just work here. Yeah, just amen. Here. Amen. Hey, us, too. Yep. Us, too, uh, on the Internet. <laughs> but the, um, the defense, too, is so much star power, mm -hmm. so much firepower, so much talent. I couldn't even imagine, like, what you're envisioning or drawing up and things like that now that you're back in the play caller seat. Like, is it reinvigorating almost? Like, do you do you have to adapt anything with the modern style of football? Has anything changed since the last time you called plays? Like, what has life been like thinking about all the weapons that you have and potentially utilizing everybody that you have? Yeah, well, I think, you know, I, I really believe that that's part of your, our job as coaches. Every year you come out, you start in spring, and you, you kind of figure out – who you have, right? And then you go through training camp and, you, and you're and you still tinkering with things and you f continue to figure out who you have and what they do best and what the strengths of your defense are and, and your individual players. And then it's our job as coaches to put those players in positions of strength uh, and manage naturally the weaknesses. So, um, you know, that's that's where we're at as far as the game, you know, changing since I've called plays. I would, I would say, yes, it has changed since I've called plays. Uh, the NFL is always changing. It's always evolving. And, and we need to evolve with it. So um, I think that's what you try and do in the offseason is adapt where you need to adapt and and uh, sustain where you can sustain. Hell yeah. Go ahead, AJ. Uh, like what's your perspective on OTAs? What's it look like from your eyes now sitting there as you've been there for multiple seasons compared to when you first came in in your first offseason? In 2017 when we first got here, you mean, AJ? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's way different. Uh, th that, those players did a phenomenal job. We were a new staff, as you mentioned, and, and um, it's a different just feel right now because we've had so much uh, continuity, um, you know, with, with the players that we've drafted and been, being able to keep those players and retain them. That leads to, you know, consistency of expectations, consistency of uh, what's expected scheme-wise, um, and that just helps. And then just with the culture, again, it's just – those guys are teaching the new guys, and in terms of what's expected, you guys know in the locker room. There's a lot of time where the coach isn't around, and it's you got to rely on the leaders of the team to 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 kind of shepherd the the sheep, so to speak. And and uh, I'm so thankful for our leaders that we have in our locker room. They they do such a fantastic job of doing that. Seemingly have put together an incredible roster year after year after year. Yeah. And obviously, Bean is a massive piece of that. You and him. Have seemingly, from the outside looking in, I don't know, uh, he might be more jock than you. You know, yeah. about him. <laughs> We don't know if he's more jock than you. We're not sure. But you two have a great relationship, it appears, from the outside looking in and kind of complement each other perfectly. Is that an accurate assessment from your view on it all? 
Yeah, he, he plays golf and I'm his caddy. So uh, <laughs> perfect tag team. Perfect. Tag. No, like he no, we do. Uh, he's uh, he's done a phenomenal job here. Uh, we wouldn't be where we are, uh, where we're at without without Brandon. And, and uh, we both came from uh, Carolina. And before that, I was with Philadelphia. So uh, it's been a true blessing to have him and his family here in, in Orchard Park with us. And um, he knows he's just got a great feel for for the things that, that we need as coaches. And, and um, he's got a great feel for people. And, and then also the, you know, the cap and managing all that goes on around the cap. So based on his background and, and how he built himself and the foundation he built in Carolina years ago. And you've been around the NFL 22 years. You know, that's not normal. Hey, <laughs> there's a lot of coaches and GMs that do not get along because as soon as shit starts hitting the fan, it's a lot of, mm -hmm. huh? Not me. Nah, nah. Yeah, a lot of that. And there's been a couple moments, I guess, over the last few years with the way expectations were where you two could have turned on each other, and it seems like that's never taken place. It's a beautiful thing to watch, and I think, like, it is something that we all notice, too, you know? Yeah, I appreciate that. No, it's, uh, it's, hard. it's hard. I mean, it's, a, as we already mentioned, a competitive business. Everyone wants to win. When a game doesn't go, you know, as we expect it to go, it's easy for the GM to say, hey, that, or same thing with the draft, or when we look to acquire players and we don't get a player – it's easy for a coach to turn around and point a finger, and and then um, you know the other side of it is always when you do have success, who who gets the credit, right? And and whose pride and ego get in the way. So I think trying to manage all that, stay aware of it, is is important for us. Not you, but coaches that have happened in the NFL. You see our roster? We made it all the way to. <laughs> yeah. You see that roster? You see what we put on? And then GM's like, you see what that coach did with that roster I gave him. Like, you'd see how that kind of starts to fester. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially with high stakes, yeah. with how much money is on the line, and how there's only 32 jobs in both of those worlds. So watching you two be a perfect combination has been a blast, I think, especially for a team that we all like to watch. Mm -hmm. Connor has a question. He's a big Patriots fan. Remember that. So anything that comes out of his mouth, <laughs> remember, the, eh, yep. you know what I mean? You know that, Coach. Go ahead, yeah, thanks for bringing that up, actually, Pat, because Pat mentioned earlier we're all rooting for the Bills later in the year. That's not true, because I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> but aside from that, with the spring league. Hey, fuck that guy. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure, whatever. With the spring league meetings uh, <laughs> coming up or that are happening right now, Coach, do you pay any attention to that stuff, whether it be the Thursday night football being able to be flexed now or the three quarterbacks on the uh, roster now or even the kickoff rule change? Is that something you consider and even talk about in the building or no? Yeah, no, it certainly is. Um, you know, as the rules change, then – some affect the game more than others. And in this case, the, the few that you mentioned, they affect the game. They affect decision-making oh. uh, before the game and obviously you know, within the game now with the kickoff uh, rule changing. So, you know, we have to, like I mentioned earlier, we have to continue to adapt. Coach, you know? it's terrible. Say it. Pac -Man, pac -Man. I would never keep the ball in. I'm quite sure he know that. But does this <laughs> affect the game? It is, right? I mean, this is legit. Yeah, it, it definitely affects we, the game. <laughs> we only shit. need, what, 30 – 25 yards, you've been field goal range now. So, as I'm sure you've heard from your special teams coordinator, who is your special teams coach? Uh, Matthew Smiley. Okay, shout out. Shout out, Coach Smiley. Oh, yeah. I assume he has already talked to you about everything that you could potentially weaponize this entire fair catch and then the, the touchback, and then we now have to hit some squibs. We want to catch the people in there, mm -hmm. which potentially have – What has there been any real conversation about what you're going to do with this new rule and – do you hate when something like this gets put in out of nowhere for no reason, seemingly? Right. Yeah, Listen. you should watch your words. Yeah. Smart. <laughs> Careful. Very I, like, I, like, I like the money to stay in my pocket right now. <laughs> smart. Very smart. But right. when, when things like this happen, though, you have to adjust, I assume, and utilize yeah, that's, it. And that's it. Every year. I mean, you just, I just, I've always subscribed to, and we sub subsequently have always subscribed to, hey, we adjust where we need to adjust. And that's what we do. The rules are the rules for a reason, and, and we adjust. We respect um, the rules that and why they come down, and so uh, we make the adjustments we have to make. That's that's the way the game is every year. Um, so all the while, the NFL is trying to make the game as safe as possible, and, mm -hmm. and we respect that. Yeah, we and as we went through last season, that's that's an important piece of, of what what the NFL is trying to do here for the betterment of the players. All right, coach. <laughs> we agree. Okay. Mm -hmm. Betterment of the players, safety of the players. Mm -hmm. But we can't just be making rules for future potential lawsuits, okay? Because then we're never going to stop. Then the, right. then the rules right. are never, never going to stop. It's like, you, hey, 
You're going to coach it great. Can't wait to hear what you have to do. <laughs> and this is obviously a big overreaction for something that isn't going to affect the game that much. But when it does, we're all going to say, that's stupid. Why, no. why are we doing that? That is stupid. But, hey, that's not coach. That's me saying it. Last question for you here, Coach, from Pac-Man Jones. Coach, this is um, going to really affect the returning game. So, when with this rule, how do you look at your roster you don't mm. need returners now, obviously, if, if, if that's the case. Uh, you might need a guy that can catch a punt. Um, does this affect how you pick guys on the roster when it comes to um, special team-wise as far as the returners? I mean, listen, we haven't thought it honestly all the way through yet just because of the timing of everything so far and being in the middle of OTAs. Um, but once we get through it, I can tell you right now, yeah, I mean, when you look at uh, roster spots and and uh, acquiring players with certain skill sets, Pac-Man. Like you were you were a returner back in the day. I believe. Weapon. And, yeah. And 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 so you, you have you, you only have so many dollars to allocate to certain positions. And you know we feel like we we have two fantastic returners in Deontay Hardy and Naheem Hines. And uh, you saw some of that the last couple of seasons. And, and so there'll be an adjustment on our on our behalf and our part. And um, you know, we'll f try and figure this thing out here for, for the betterment of our team, just like everybody else is out there trying to do as well. Naeem took two in that one game, right? Yeah, yeah last yeah. game of the season. What a game change. That's a yeah. winner. You win the game right there. Yeah. Yeah. Was there four, four or six total kickoff returns last year for touchdown? Naeem had two of them. Yeah. But oh, you guys focus on the teams, huh, a little bit? You guys focus on teams a little bit? We do. Yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah, it's because you're a great fucking coach. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Have an incredible OTAs. Hopefully you'll be able to dress for a funeral after the, uh, the defense does what it does to the offense. Black tank top tomorrow. Going in. Black <laughs> tank top. Are you jock, though? We don't know if you're jocked. You know, you, we don't know if you're jocked. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Sean McDermott. Yeah!